Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's talk hook up is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano rods and reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Welcome back. Hour number two, Let's Talk Hook Up, right here on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Pete Gray here, along with Rock Cod Rick Maxa, at a very quiet San Diego landings yeah. in Point Loma here. I've been saying that often this yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And a uh, great couple of guys in the studio from AFCO, Matt Q, Matt V, uh, talking some serious product. We just... Scratch the surface of the AFCO product here. I don't think we scratched it all yet. I mean, there's yeah. so much stuff we keep talking about. You know, somebody else will bring something up. Oh yeah, we make this too. You yeah. know, it's just been a great show. There's so much killer stuff going on. You know, both on the clothing side, the hardware side, all the great tackle. It's been a great show. And man, if you want to continue, keep the ball rolling. Join us. We've got a great show going this morning. And these two guys are so full of info. We would love to hear from you. Give us a call this morning at two one three four three two ten ninety. One more time, two one three four. Four three two ten ninety, or send us a text on that. Let's talk about. We've got a lot of text coming through today. Much higher percentage of text, so it leads for a great opportunity for you to give us a call this morning. We actually have a phone line open right now. You can get directly through two one three four three two ten ninety. And Pete, you mentioned earlier in the show we are giving away such a killer couple of great prizes from AFCO. First is that great Seafarer bib. You're going to get the full Seafarer bib in your size, and then also one of those brand new AFCO real bags. So some really killer prizes yeah. at the end of today's show. Yeah, for sure. And uh, time for the catch report today. You got it. Our fishdope.com reporter standing by. Captain Mark Wish of Pacific Edge is on the line. Good morning, Mark. Morning, Ricky, Pete, Matt, Matt. Great show this morning. Thanks, Good Mark. Morning. This is our last report of 2023, man. Holy yeah. cow. Crazy. It's, uh, it's definitely got kind of a, a wintry feeling to it. Man, we had heavy showers up here right at daylight and we got some wind coming this afternoon on top of that huge swell. You know, I looked at the buoy observations, I think it was Wednesday night, and uh, some of the swell on the outside, like outside Nick, 23 feet. I don't Ooh. think I've ever seen it that big. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah it beaches up here, man. It uh, uh, definitely going to change around some of the surf spots, on, you know, where we surf fish. And have some new holes, I guarantee you. But anyway... It's going to be a good afternoon this afternoon uh, to be sitting on the couch watching a little football, I think. Not too much fun on the water. <laughs> so a couple quick reminders for you guys. Do not forget to get your new fishing license for 2024. If you've got one of the old-style ones that it actually expires uh, at the end of the year, like mine did, you know, you got to get that new one. And some of you guys got the new ones that have different expiration dates. But regardless, make sure you're going to be covered for that because they are checking. And then uh, don't forget that rockfish is closed as of the 1st. You can beat up on sculpins and whitefish, but no cod fishing until uh, April 1st. So snappers are safe for a while. And uh, as to reports, as you might expect, not a whole lot going on with, uh, you know, the weather we've had. But uh, there are a few interesting exceptions. Locally here, you know, basically in my backyard, that, that bass fishing out there on Isers, it's just been a gift that keeps on giving. It's been really, really good fishing for this time of year. Water was kind of clean and stable until this recent swell. And, you know, it'll clean up after this, of course. But, man, that, that those bass were biting out there full speed, guys. Fishing uh, squid on the leadhead there. They were just getting them. And a lot of big ones. Really good grade there. And then uh, just yesterday, Danny from Fishbowl called me with some breaking news. This is interesting. We haven't seen much of this recently, but the boats from uh, Dana Point found some bite in Benita, like bird schools and sonar marks like that off San Onofre, and uh, really nice grade of fish, five to eight pounds, biting jigs and baits. So I bet when uh, Brian Woolley calls in tomorrow and does his uh, Dana Point report, he's going to have some really interesting stuff to talk about. And then uh, as, as a little sidebar, and it's probably a little beyond the scope of this report in terms of where I normally cover, but... I just wanted to mention that, you know, looking down the coast there, there's some nice water, and it's not too far down. And a couple of those long-range boats that are down there, the RP for sure, man, they've had some really, really good tuna fishing 
and it's not that far away. Yeah. And we've got this nice uphill push with the developing El Nino, and it's you know they're easing it into the strong category now. So I'm thinking we're going to have some good early season tuna fishing here this year. So make sure you're getting all your gear ready and your boats ready and so on and so forth, because I'm guessing that stuff's going to be here early. And uh, that's a wrap for 2023. That's all we got. And uh, we'll be talking more in 24. Yeah, you know, uh, that water is, I mean, offshore and, and inshore, too. It's been so much warmer than normal, it's, it's, and that's probably why the Bonita's around and stuff like that. It's going to be interesting to see what this giant northwest swell did to all that, but I can imagine not a lot because there's a lot of, a lot of warm water around because of that El Nino, huh? Oh, for sure. You know, the buoy that's uh, the West Mission Bay buoy, has been 64 degrees. It's like 8 or 10 miles off Mission Bay, something like that. It's been 64 up until, I think this morning, it dropped down to 63. The Clemente buoy's been up to 63, and uh, it's been 62 for a long time. Tanner came up a degree. And then even the buoys way up the coast are almost all 60 and 61, which is definitely warm for this time of year. So that uh, El Nino scenario that is developing, you know, they're forecasting a pretty good one. And, you know, some of the other charts that you can look at that show what the water is doing, like week by week, one of them, uh, it was all red showing the water's warming all, all throughout this area, you know, from the past week there. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to start early. So Yeah, okay. We like that. Like that man. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. And, of course, <laughs> Danny and the boys at fishdope.com will have all that information for you. Keep you abreast of what's going on on the water. Uh, don't forget, today and tomorrow, last days to renew uh, your membership to save 40 bucks, uh, 30 bucks, excuse me. Uh, the uh, price of fish dope is going up to $199. Uh, it was $169. Today and tomorrow, it's $169. You can add on, if you even if your membership ends today, you can add on another year for the old price today and tomorrow, and then it goes to $199. And then, of course, after that, if you're a new member to fish dope, you're going to save 30 bucks by using the code hook up now lowercase no space hook up now your twenty dollar code and mark how do we find you for the base bait tanks and more <laughs> hey pete we're uh we're in huntington beach we're on the corner of bolsa chica and edinger phone number at the store is area code someone four eight four zero four two six two website specific edge tackle.com and uh yeah we're looking forward to next year your reports start next week i like All it right man. Good stuff. And we'll talk to you next Saturday. You got it. We'll Happy see you guys. New Happy New Year. Thanks, buddy. All right. While we're waiting for our buddy Marcos, we got the phones are packed up. The texts are rolling through. Again, if you want to get your shot, it's 213-432-1090. All right. I have a great text here from uh, Gary in Huntington Beach. Sent a nice text. And uh, it says, uh, um, good morning, guys. Which overall bib is best for nighttime jigging but not too cumbersome? And are they easily to alter the length of the leg? And have do they have zippers or on the bottoms? Wish everyone a great New Year. Awesome. Well, Happy New Year to start. Um, I would recommend our barricade bib. Um, super lightweight, breathable uh, bib. It has Velcro on the bottom, so you can actually cinch it down to your boot so it's not dragging on the deck nice um i wouldn't recommend hemming um you know the suits at all just because you're essentially penetrating the membrane with a needle which can't be waterproofed after that happens um but i'd say barricades your best bet for for you know something perfect for socal night jigging um you know on a long range boat that'd be the one i would go with Okay. okay, and like you say, the beauty of that drawstring is, or the the strap on the bottom is even if you're even if the the bibs are a little long for you, you can just pull them up and just cinch it around. Yeah, or, you can pull or, it up and cinch them, and you know it has the zipper, you know, from kind of mid calf down, so you can unzip it, get your foot through with a boot, um, zip it, and cinch it down. Um, you know, fully elasticated suspenders as well, so you can ad- actually adjust the height on your chest with the suspenders um, as well. So if you're dragging a little bit, you can lift the whole thing up yeah, a little higher on you. Okay, cool. yeah, that's a good call. 
Good, right. Well, good info. Good luck. Hey, I had another great text. Uh, it says, good morning, boys. My question is for both mats. I still have the OG Horizon fleece, and it's literally my everyday jacket. The jacket goes from full-day trips on the Liberty to hiking and everything in between, and it's the best quality piece of clothing that I've ever owned. Uh, can you explain the difference between the Reaper sweatshirt and the Shadow sweatshirt? Um, thanks, and Happy New Year to everybody. That's from Ralph and Menifee. Awesome. Hey, Ralph. Um, yeah, so uh, the Reaper was our, you know, our original kind of technical fishing uh, fleece, so it has the face gator um, to keep your face warm. Um, you know, what we found out is people really love the material, but some people don't like the gator. So we came out with Shadow, which is very similar construction. It's a little bit lighter fleece, so you know it's gonna keep you, you know it's gonna keep you warm, but it's not as heavy as Reaper, and it also doesn't have that face buff. Um, built into it, so that's just the main difference. I didn't know that. that's going to be the shadow. I, I, yeah, shadow fleece head. Yeah. In in the times where you, when it's cold, I really like the face buff thing that the Reaper has. But I would say in general, I'd be more the shadow. Like, uh, yeah, I, I find. I find that I need the face shield way less than I have it on. You know what I mean? So that that, that that's that's good info. I, I, yeah. The and, and interesting fact too is we uh we have a new Reaper windproof. We've had it you know now for let's say about a year. Um, but it's it's a, a windproof. Jacket? Yeah. So it's yeah. a full zip windproof jacket, Super and the nice. face buff actually tucks behind your neck when you're not using it. Oh, okay. So it's not sewn to where you can only wear it with it on. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's another great option. And that one's you know water resistant, windproof, um, and has that full zip with. The the hood that tucks behind your neck. Now, is the shadow um, insulated and windproof, waterproof like the Reaper? Uh, so the, the they're both uh, the Reaper and Shadow are DWR coated, so they're, they'll repel light amounts of uh-huh. you know spray you know from the bait tank or whatnot. Uh, but they're not windproof. Okay. Um, the windproof you would go to the, the so the Reaper there's it's kind of confusing. There's four different ones essentially. Yeah. So if you want the windproof Reaper, we do make the windproof version. But that's the, standard, the jacket. Yeah, the jacket. The standard fleece version's not um, not gotcha. windproof. More insulated. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, that's correct. The All regular right. Reaper hoodie style sweatshirt is my favorite. It's very slick. It's very comfortable. It may not be waterproof, but man, like everything, everything for the most part that you encounter that's not full on rain just rolls off of it. Yeah, it beads right up, and, yeah. you know, and rolls right off. That's awesome. Well, hey, appreciate the uh, phone call, or the text very much. Let's continue on with our catch port. Head on down to C4 Sport Fishing and talk to our buddy Marcos. Marcos, what a year it has been, buddy. It's been a pretty amazing year for fishing. We've actually had a few of them in a row here. It's like it's getting consistently better. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean what a what a 2023 of of reports from Marcos. I mean it started yeah. it started early and there was no gaps in between, man. This was a a great year at C4 Sport Fishing. Well, why don't we end the reports with this one? The uh Player Supreme, they started day 5 of their 5 day today. They have 105 bluefin and 160 yellowfin on yeah. the boat. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of December. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the 30th. Yeah. That's the 30th. So they're not very far away. I can know that. I mean, they're probably well within range of some of those, you know, day and a half, two day boats that we've been seeing all year. Like, it's been that way all year. And we've talked about this, you know, that bluefin fishing, that, you know, which used to be a little bit at the beginning of the season, maybe a little bit at the end of the season. It just turned into a whole season of bluefin fishing. Those guys are getting so good at finding that fish. It's it's unbelievable. And now yellowfin too. And, and, and some yellowfin, yeah. That's <laughs> that was a nice little surprise. 160 yellowfin, you know, wow. pretty good. It, it's always like the old saying around the landing is that we always run out of fishermen before we run out of fish. That's never been more true than this year. I mean, it, it is. There is still good fishing to be had, but it's you know, Christmas is already over. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. In you know, in a couple yeah. days. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's I get it. It's tough. It's tough to go. I mean, you got a long season here. You know, it's like we start in March, end in December. It's like, you know, it's almost a whole year. That downtime is definitely a little, you know, a little shorter now. That's what's so crazy to think about is, you know, we, we've been so blessed to have some of these such early starts with tuna fishing. I mean, March is right around the corner. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, yeah. you better get that reel in for service and get your line done. I mean, the, the potential, you know, th- this season, as you just hear from Marco's report, really hasn't ended, and the, the quote-unquote start is not far away. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, the shortening window of off-season there, like you said, to get your gear set up. For those guys to do boat work, for the crew to take a rest, you know, it's, like it's, yeah. it's definitely a busy, busy year there. And, well, we've got maybe one more day of that rock fishing uh, tomorrow. Depends on what the weather does. Like today, we're sitting in here. It's pretty slow down here. We canceled everything. A little rough going in and out of the harbor here and a little rain this morning. So we gave the guys a couple of days off there to relax. We're online for fishing tomorrow. We'll see how the weather 
it goes. But if not starting the first there, the new sea force is going to be running those local trips still. Uh, we won't be able to catch our rockfish, but we're going to take a look around for whatever else is available there. And take a look at that website, seaforthlanding.com. And we're only going to be running, running one trip a day here for you know at least the next month or so. So definitely check that out. You know, like I said, we're going to keep fishing. You know, no breaks for those guys. They get to go right back out there. Yeah, for sure. Especially when the swell comes down. I imagine, Absolutely, yeah. I imagine the entrance to Mission Bay Harbor is not a pretty place right now. <laughs> it has not been for the last couple of days here. You know, that, yeah. that afternoon kind of, we got a small cast advisor through the end of today. Hopefully tomorrow, or actually through the end of tomorrow. So hopefully by Monday when the new Sea Force gets back out there, it'll calm down a bit. And it will. I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah, I mean, it's, it's San Diego. We're going to get a few bad days of weather, and they'll be right back to it. And January, it's probably going to be, you know, 75 degrees out on the water there, you know, 80 inland. So definitely a good time to bring out all that new gear you got for Christmas and get on the boat there and go fishing. Well said, Marcos. Well, a great year of reports. We sure appreciate everything you do here on Let's Talk Hookup, keeping us up to date. And if somebody wants to jump on with you and, uh, and do fish that new tackle and get ready for things, book charters, all the great stuff, how do we find you guys at Seafloor Sport Fishing? On the web, head to seaforthlanding.com. we got our full schedule up there. Right now, it's just those half days. As soon as we start scheduling other trips, those will pop up on there. Uh, give us a call at the office, 619-224-3383. We're welcome to come down and visit us. It's kind of lonely down here this morning. So, yeah, go hang out with Marcos. Yeah. yeah, if you want to stop by, say hi, get some you know, tackle, or get some, like you said, get that gear service for next year because... There's not going to be a lot of time to put it away and store it in the garage before you have to get it right back out. I know a lot of people are talking about wanting to go down and look at the big swell. If you're going to do that, go stop in and say, go say hi to yeah. Marcos. Go bring Absolutely. Him yeah. I mean, you, you can hear you can hear the ocean from where I'm standing in the office. So, yeah. So you shouldn't have to go too far to hear that and see that pretty big swell there. Yeah. I believe that. Well, Marcos, great job as always, buddy. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next year. We'll talk next year, guys. Thanks, All right. buddy. Thanks. Appreciate that. That wraps up our catch report. That's it, man. Sponsored by the Fish Pros at Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Hey, coming soon, we talked about it, the all-new and easier online system to book your processing orders for your long-range trips. Plus, with the addition of the new team members, they're going to continue to make Fisherman's Processing far ahead of the rest with more same-day capacity and the finest customer service. Stop by their location in Old Town on Taylor Street or check Fisherman'sProcessing.com. All right, phones are packing up. One line open only. Well, two one three four three two ten ninety. Let's jump into it. Rick. Rod and Camarillo's up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Rod, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Good morning. Um, Happy New Year to everyone. How you guys doing? Same to you. Good Great. morning. Well, thank you so much. Well, I'm I'm not much of a saltwater fisherman, to be totally honest. My brother is hardcore. My brother Reggie Wynn, and I'm sitting here enjoying the show with him as he listens to you guys every single week. I just want to call in and give the guys at AFCO major props because I I fish primarily bass fishing, freshwater bass fishing in tournaments and such, and I rock nothing but the AFCO gear, and it has done nothing but uh, great things for me from the rain to the wind to the sun. You know, I love the hydro bibs, um, the, the, um, the bibs, the sun shirts, everything from the buffs, the whole nine. I just have one ask from, from my AFCO people. Can we please get some more items in the color red? I'm big with the black and red. <laughs> no, I appreciate the support. And, you know, it's funny. Um, that's actually uh, a big ask from some of our people in the southeast. You know, a lot of the school colors and whatnot are red. And uh, we have some stuff coming down the pipe uh, for spring and fall of next year that are going to have red in them. Oh, that's uh, interesting. More red. Yeah, so, you don't think about go, that. There's Rob. not a lot of red in the AFCO line. Yeah, there's not a lot. It's a lot yeah. of grays, blues, no, there's not. Yeah. silvers, um, green. So, yeah, we do have red on the way, but you'll have to wait a few more months. You know, to, to Rod's point, too, which I'll, I'll so cool about good. <laughs> Thanks, Rod. You, you guys, say hi to Reggie for yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys jumped into freshwater, I mean, not that long ago, and quickly, I mean, that's it. Like, you look at the tournament pros, oh, and, yeah. and more importantly, the people who aren't being paid to wear, you know what I mean? Like, it's everything. Like, <clears throat> because you took the same attitude that you do to saltwater gear, and, like, you made very tech-specific things for those guys, and there wasn't as much focus into good gear, you know? Yeah. And, and you put the AFCO spin on it. Next thing you know, like AFCO is where you see everywhere on all the high-end freshwater guys. Yeah, you know, the unique thing too, you know, um, 
one thing we always say internally is, you know, a lot of people can make a rain suit. Uh, a lot of people can make a sun shirt. Um, but it's really about what you do for the sport of fishing uh, that people remember. And in, in that case, in saltwater for so long has been conservation through CCA or IGFA, ASA. You know, every year AFCO donates 10% of its profits to the variety of organizations that allow us to continue to fish. Yes. Um, and in freshwater, that was lacking. Um, you know, you look at the fish, fishing industry as a whole nowadays, it's been bought up by private equity groups that care nothing more than the bottom line on an Excel sheet at the end of the year um, and making sure that they're ahead. Um, for AFCO, it, it's not that way, being family-owned. So for us, when we looked at freshwater, we said, well, there's a need there for conservation, whether, you know, habitat restoration, um, fish stocking, um, in how do we support that? So for us, we went and supported Bass, which is you know the biggest organization in the bass fishing world, um, in their conservation program. And in turn, a lot of the success we've had in freshwater is kind of compiled on top of that. Um, and that's one thing we're big on. You know, we don't throw money at things. We throw our time and our effort and you know a lot of the expertise that we have in our staff into certain areas and try to help out where we can to kind of preserve the sport and make it better. That's cool. Bill Shed, your chairman, is the hardest working guy I know. That guy spends so much time and effort, not only at the company, but also for efforts to keep us fishing. Yeah. And I, I, nobody does more yeah. for this industry than Bill Shedd. You know, yeah, and you know, that comes from Bill's dad as well. And you yeah. look at Casey now, Casey, you know, Bill sends our president. Um, Milt had told Bill a long time ago, you know, the ocean has been so good to us and over the years and, you know, for, through AFCO and other businesses that they had. So we need to find ways to benefit the fishery and fish in the water. And how do we do that? And a lot of that's, you know, a lot of the conservation efforts that Bill, Bill's donated over 10,000 hours to conservation, yeah. um, you know, went to uh, Congress and, you know, Bill's a very unique individual in the sense of he's so knowledgeable about everything in this industry. And when it comes to, you know, the politics behind it, um, very few people that have that skill set that can go, you know, run a business on top of doing all that to continue to grow the sport and keep it safe. And he's turned the raids over to his sons, but he's still working diligently. <laughs> like he's probably at yeah. AFCO most of the time. So anyway, I, right? I always say, yeah, Bill said, ah, oh, God, I mean, five years ago, I, th I think I'm going to slow down. Yeah. That was coming one less day a week. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then most recently, uh, you know, it's been, you know, one or two days, uh, but Bill's still there. All the time, even yeah. though the kids are running it, uh, you know, Bill's passion for fishing um, is huge. Yeah. And you know, Ricky's fish with them. I'm sure Pete, you fish with them. But every fish with Bill is his first fish. And <laughs> yeah. uh, in his in his retirement life, he's got to enjoy a lot of the you know success and time that he's put into to AFCO and in the fishing industry. And he's actually been doing a lot of smallmouth bass fishing. Yeah. Uh, which is his new addiction. Um, so it's fun to see him enjoy it. Someone who's worked so hard for so long, and you know, also fun to see, you know. Casey, Cody, and Christy, the siblings at AFCO running it, um, and kind of see where, you know, the next phase. You know, most, you look at most businesses, there's very few third generation businesses that are successful. Um, and we're proud to be one. Yeah. Um, so it's exciting. Yeah, that's, it's true. Third generation. Yeah. 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 No kidding. Hey, a great text here from Tim in Long Beach here. Morning, guys. I'm familiar with the flawless performance of the Reaper pullover when it comes to marine environment. Besides fishing, how well does it perform in the field when it comes to hunting applications? I may encounter heavy brush and also the need to lock in human scent. Uh, also, are there hunting camel patterns available? Yeah, that's a great question. I'll yeah, it is. That one. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we have uh, the Reaper comes in three different camo patterns. So camo patterns, were, uh, we got you covered there. Uh, there's a bottom land country DNA and a mossy oak. Um, so you got all sorts of great options there as far as uh, camo colors. Um, as far as human uh, holding human scent in, um, it, it is a, bre a somewhat breathable sweatshirt, so it's not going to excel um, in, that, uh, in, in that way. Mm -hmm. But um, just it's not just designed to do that. Mm -hmm. But as far as, like, walking through brush, Brush. Um, it's uh, the fleece is super super tightly knit, so it actually does very well, um, you know, running through trees and brush and sticks. Uh, so it's uh, it's a very durable f uh, fleece fabric. It's made out of, so it's going to do really well holding up to getting snagged on stuff. On that, yeah. I would say too. One thing, my my uncle's a big hunter, you know, hunts elk and deer and all kinds of stuff, and he wears it. Um, but his big thing was, you know, he's spraying urine on himself. <laughs> so, and all of our stuff has a DWR coating, so he would spray it. He'd be like, let's well, just beating up. It's not so 
soaking in. <laughs> so That's I always funny. recommend spraying it on the inside a little bit and oh, then nice. letting it sit flat for a few days after you spray it just to let it kind of absorb because the DWR's job is to not let it soak in. So if your plan is to just get out of the truck and spray it, you're going to have a lot of dripping coming off of your shirt and not a lot gotcha. of sticking. So. Gotcha. You ready for that, Pete? Yeah, yeah I don't soak, think so. Soak your shirt in some urine. <laughs> yeah. Make, make yeah, sure it soaks not? in for several days. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. Like, and then put it on. I was like, oh, geez, this is the one I soaked yeah. in here. Yeah. Just don't do it in your living room. Your, yeah. might, your wife might be a little upset. <laughs> hey, we had a great text come through from John and Mira Mesa. It says, years ago, you'd occasionally see guys fishing with their bait sticks using the AFCO lightweight roller guides. Uh, with Matt's experience at the long fin, can you tell me a little bit about those? Are those guides still available? And then are there any uh, replacements available if we have an old set? Uh, yeah, so the lightweight roller guides are still made. Um, they've definitely fallen out of popularity, um, but uh, they still work phenomenal. I mean, they still cast I great. I love those things. Yeah, yeah they're, they're and it, it's it's just a kind of a cool like old school retro mm-hmm. look. Like we've got a we actually have an old school Loomis Pelagic series that at the at the warehouse that has all Afco rollers on it, and it's just a really cool little rod. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, so they still. So you can still get them. Yep, you can still get them. You can still get individual ones. Um, you can still get full sets. Um, they still work great and everything you know it's just the you know with the way trends go it's just the ring guides are are a lot more popular right now the coolest thing about the afco lightweight rollers was not the lesser friction that they gave you and it was not the you know incredibly durability that they gave you and all those other good things a good look it was the noise they made yes. yep. you hooked a big <laughs> fish that was fish. really ripping line off of those things you could hear all those little rollers it was Same. man that was the coolest uh-huh. yeah, those were super <laughs> super cool hey when we come back we got a lot more let's talk hookup coming your way more your phone calls and more with the boys from AFCO. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Hey everybody, this is Captain Dwayne Diego, four-pack charter captain, here to talk to you about Parker Boats and the good folks at West Coast Marine. When it came time to start Pinnacle Sport Fishing and get my own boat, there was only one choice. I wanted a Parker. Then there's a real good reason for it. The fishability and seaworthiness. I've been fishing on Parkers for years now, and I know the abuse they can take. Parker Marine builds a heavy-duty, industrial-strength boat, probably overbuilt, but that's what I need when we're out 12 hours a day, over 300 days a year, running and charters. The guys at West Coast Marine built me one heck of a fishing boat. From the custom tower with steering and throttle controls to the backup bait pump system, my Parker 2520 XLD will deliver me to the fishing grounds reliably and safe. Take it from me. If you're ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, honest deal, you need to see West Coast Marine located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa or check them out and their inventory and information online at westcoastmarine.com. This is Pete, and I hear it all the time. That Jim and Mary at Poway Valley Collision are amazing. I took my car to Poway Valley Collision, mentioned Let's Talk Hookup, and they gave us VIP treatment, fixed our car, and even gave us a special price. Believe me when I say Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. At some point, your car will need a body repair, and I'm confident in saying it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. Our listeners can save hundreds of dollars on your next car or truck repair. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, MetLife, Wawanisa, and more. All you do is call Jim, Mary, or any of their team members, and they do all the rest. No hassles, just top-notch work and VIP treatment. When you take your car or truck to Poway Valley Collision, the job and experience will be top-notch. Get it fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. Safe travel should always include travel insurance. This is Bob Dawson at Dawson & Associates. We offer many different plans from one-year plans to single-trip plans. Traveling twice or more a year, an annual plan will cover most every trip that you make. Also, if you get injured on a trip, it'll fly you back home or fly you to a hospital of your choice, and it's worldwide coverage once you're 100 miles from home. So call me at 619-990-3068 or go to safariglobaltravel.com. Hey anglers, John Erty here with Visit Mammoth. We've been a proud sponsor of the Kids Fish Free Trout Pond at the Hall Family Shows for more than a decade. Stop by our booth at the Bart Hall Shows and find out why Mammoth Lakes is such a special place to visit. Plan your trip now at visitmammoth.com. 
Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning, talking so much fun and fishing with the boys from AFCO. We've been saying it again, but boy, the phones are completely packed up right now, but there's still plenty of time to get your phone calls through. That's 213-432-1090. Let's jump into it. You got it, man. How about this time we talk to Jim. He's calling us from National City this morning. Hey, Jim, welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, ha- morning. Happy New Year this uh, 2024. Yeah, Matt. Uh, happy New Year, guys. I got you a couple too, of questions. First, yeah, thank you. Uh, first on those shorts, um, uh, 44, 46s, do you guys have the larger sizes? Um, I'll be coming in the fishermen to check on them. But, yeah, maybe an inch or two bigger, or well, maybe an inch, inch or three bigger or smaller on the waist size on the shorts. And also that sun product, uh, you were mentioning the fluorocarbon. You're saying they're manufacturing your fluorocarbon now? Excellent sun product, excellent fluorocarbon. So I would not think twice of picking up your fluorocarbon when I come down to see Rick at the Fisherman's Landing. So anyway, just I'd like to know about the short size. Yeah, no, appreciate the support. Um, so in shorts in the 46 range, um, we, we, in Fisherman's Landing carries our M01L. Um, I believe it's in the bottom right, far right when, you, when you're when you in the store is on the bottom shelf. But um, those are 46. They can get them up to 46. And then I will look at our stealth short, which they carry too. It's a 44, but it has a lot of extra room and stretch in it, and you might be able to get it to work. Those would be the two that I would look at, and Fisherman's Landing has both of those shorts in stock. And then also touching on the fluorocarbon that you mentioned, I, I thought that was a, a cool thing that you guys, you know, you sought out who you wanted. You know, you sought out a quality manufacturer just like Jim was talking about, but then went to that manufacturer and said, these are the prop, these are the, these are the properties that we're after. Like we want, we want a line to do this. And then those guys put their heads together and they, then they produced what is now the Aftco Psycho Pro. Yeah. You know, some lines involvement in saltwater is very little. They're, they're very dominant. Uh, in freshwater in, in the states here in Japan, they have saltwater, but their fishery is so different than ours. Um, you know, Greg was still at AFCO at the time, and um, him and a few others that are fishy people in the office put their heads together and, like, what's the AFCO formula and why? Um, and, you know, our big thing was abrasion resistance, is what we really focused on. Um, and they've been able to perfect that. Um, and, you know, going and seeing their factory in Japan and um, it's just incredible. I mean, I've never seen R&D department where you literally armed guards, you can't go inside with lab coats on as wow. they're mixing all the different, you know, stuff yeah. to make fluoro. And then to have wine dons now too, quality wine dons, that is so huge yeah. that you know they're built correctly and, and with the quality stuff. That's a big deal. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, I want to mention on, on letstalkhookup.com, our website, uh, you can, of course, uh, check out all the great recipes. And uh, Chef Jeff has done it again. He has a grilled ahi with crab cake on it. Really a nice, nice. recipe yeah. there. So you have to check that out. It's uh, at letstalkhookup.com on our angler's table uh, section of our website. Uh, Chef Jeff, thank you very much for all the nice uh, product that you put out there for nice. sure. Yeah, I have a great text here, too, uh, for from Cindy, and um, she says, you know, this is a really good question. She says, as a woman, I want to go out hooping with my husband, but I don't like getting wet. What would you recommend? Mm. That's a perfect question. Um, so we actually have a women's uh, hydronaut suit. Um, so the nice thing about that is really comfortable um, bib style, you know, bibs, really. The the tops are not elasticated, so they're more of like kind of like a uh, overall. They distribute the weight. Uh, better across your shoulders and it comes with the jacket so you're going to stay completely warm um and comfortable and you're going to look good doing and it dry and dry yeah, yeah and it looks good you know afco has expanded their women's clothing line recently and, and there's some really great women's clothing on there yeah you know uh we have women designing the product now which is a huge thing you yeah. know for a long time we had men designing women's product that doesn't really work <laughs> so I, I sure i can see that yeah. yeah so uh you know now all of our designers put their heads together and you know you look at a lot of other brands in our space and they went the bikini you know route 
uh, which is not very technical. And, you know, a lot of women want to be covered up when they're on the water. So our product offers that, whether it's, you know, a longer taper in the back on the sun shirt. So if you're, you know, hanging over the rail, you know, you're not showing the world what's going on or longer shorts, um, more stretch to them. Um, just a variety of options for people to be comfortable on the water and look at doing it. Yeah. That's awesome. So check out their women's line. They're, they're, they're made by women for women. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I had a, uh, another great text come through. It says, Happy New Year, guys. Stoked to see AFCO jumping so head first into the SoCal tackle market. I watched the crossbreed dominate on Bluefin Tuna this year, and I'm definitely a believer. What I need now, though, is a new larger tackle backpack. I've been having trouble seeing some of the AFCO bags in person. Can you guys give me some ideas on where the best place in Orange County I can see a large selection of the soft good tackle bags? That's from Mike in San Juan Capistrano. Gotcha. Uh, Mike, thanks for the text, man. Um, so as far as a shop in Orange County that uh, does carry all the different bags that we have, um, your best bet's going to be to find them all at Longfin. Uh, Longfin carries every single bag, and uh, we have an awesome tackle backpack. Uh, it uh, holds uh, four 3,600-size uh, tackle trays um, and then uh, has space and you know, pockets on the side and has plenty of space up top as well. So if you're looking for a backpack, our uh, tackle backpack would be, would be a phenomenal option for you. You know, one thing that we have talked a lot about are the different types of tackle bags that AFCO is now making. Mm-hmm. Really nice stuff. Yeah, we have a bunch of di- we have a bunch of great options for them. Um, and uh, as as far as we have three different styles or three different sizes of our uh, traditional tackle bag, um, we have a 3,500 size, which is going to fit like a 3,500 size tackle box, which is our smallest one. Um, that one's really geared towards uh, trout fishing, you know, small trout and light duty freshwater fishing. Um, and then we have a 30 uh, 36 size, which holds uh, 3,600 size tackle boxes, uh, really good for you know local inshore fishing up to you know two three day trips. And then we also have our 37 size in our tackle bag which holds uh four 3700 size tackle boxes That's and then uh, yeah and then even the side pockets on that will hold 37 so you can wow. if you really get after it you can put about seven 3700 size tackle boxes in that Jeez. one so <laughs> you can hold way more tackle than you'll you'll ever need so that one's phenomenal for you know going to be your longer trips whether it's a uh, three three up to you know 16 day trips we had a text earlier that was kind of it, it just it was it was long and not on but but part of it was asking about waterproofing uh sport boat wise both you know on the bottom if things get saturated spray that kind of stuff could you you know do the do the bags take into anything account that way in terms of elements and that kind of stuff yeah absolutely so uh, the bottoms of all the bags are uh, have like a rubber coating on it so it's fully waterproof on the bottom um and then uh most of our bags will have a pullover rain cover oh, nice. um so uh you know if it's raining or if it's just complete victory it's and you're taking water over the house, pouring down on it. You don't want your bag to get completely soaked. Um, there's a rain a rain cover that you can pull over it. And then also just the bags are highly water resistant anyways. Yeah. So, you know, for a light, light spray, um, you know, light... Uh, light rain, excuse me. Um, there, you know, it's going to take a lot for that water to penetrate through the bag. Yeah. So cool coming home, sport boat fishing, whether it be a local or a long range trip. That you know, when the guys are scrubbing the boat down, and you're you know, you're eating your celebratory cheeseburger and drinking <laughs> a beer on the way home. You can just throw that rain fly over the top. Those guys can scrub away, and your bag's going to stay sano the whole time. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. It has enough coating on it. You know, like Matt said, for everyday use, it's totally fine. But if you get a torrential downpour, you definitely want to pull that cover over the top. Well, the cover, yeah. And that'll case. keep it dry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Very good. Let's jump in the phones, Rick. You got it. How about this time we talked to Dave. He's called us from Anaheim this morning. Dave, good morning. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, guys. Uh, uh, Today is my 53rd birthday, and uh, I just would – I'm asking what you guys would recommend my family and friends buy me today. (laughs) (laughs) Happy birthday, Dave. Happy Happy birthday. birthday. Oh, boy, that's a tough one. Yeah, what do you need? You need clothing, you need tackle bags, you need uh real bags, you need lures. What what's your what's your thought? Um probably lures and some floral carbon. Okay, there you, there you go. go. Okay, they can fix you up on that, Matt. Yeah, definitely, Dave. Uh what type of trips do you fish mostly? Doing half day um, trips or multi day trips? Um anywhere from half day to fourteen days. Gotcha. Okay. So you do it all. I fish it all. 
That's that's phenomenal. So, um, I mean, we have a, a whole different range of uh, sizes on that psycho floor, fluorocarbon. So we have everything from 12 pound up to 300 pound. Um, so they can grab you a number of different sizes as far as the uh, line goes there. Definitely on your long trips, you'll want to have some of those wind on leaders. Uh, phenomenal, especially for the long range trips. Those are phenomenal. And then um, gr- the, those crossbreeds yeah. uh, from 60 Catch gram everything. all the way up to yeah. 120 gram. I mean, the 60 gram one is a phenomenal lure to fish inshore, bass, barracuda, Bonita, um, and then uh, also if you get some of that pickier yellowfin that's uh, eating small small stuff, and even some of the bluefin that's going to eat small stuff, those crossbreeds are phenomenal. An 80 gram, you know, crossbreed, you could catch a sculpin, a salmon, or a 200 pound bluefin tuna yeah. with the same hardware on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that that thing is a that's the there's no such thing as a this does everything, but that's about as damn close as you can get to it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Very good. Hey, hope that helps you out. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. I have a great text there from Rick in Chula Vista. He says, I do a lot of surf fishing as well as trout fishing in the streams and rivers. Does AFCO have or considering making waders? That Ooh. would be cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, uh, we get this question a lot just because of our involvement in outerwear. And uh, sure. we don't have any plans to do that. I think, you know, there's other uh, people in our space that do a tremendous job of making waders and have perfected it. Um, it's just not something that we're kind of going into at the moment. Give it time. Yeah. You guys make yeah. everything else killer. You might yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. We do and have. I, I can see why people ask you for it, too, because, like, everything everything you make is so top-notch. Like, we, we want the option. Yeah. No, we do have for stream, for surf fishing and stream fishing, we do actually have another uh, tackle backpack called the Urban Angler Pack. Oh. Uh, that that would be a phenomenal pack. for, for It's what I use when I go surf fishing. But uh, it's a smaller pack. It, it'll hold one 3,600-size tackle box. with some. It has lure binders and everything in there. Uh, and it also has a built-in camel pack, so you can keep hydrated while you're walking around. Oh, sweet. That's cool. That's really good. Hey, I, I wanted to read a great text. Says, good morning, guys, and Happy New Year. Uh, is there a special laundry detergent that we should use when we're cleaning mm-hmm. these technical bibs and jackets? Thanks from Randy in Costa Mesa. Hey, Randy. Yeah, great great question. Um, one thing I always recommend is, um, is using Nic Wax. You can buy it at REI. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, AFCO sells it, and a lot of the tackle stores are carrying it now. <clears throat> you know, the super technical apparel um you know, your average detergent like Gain or Dawn or you know, over-the-counter stuff is a little bit harsh on it. So using Nick Wax is great because it, you know, cleans the bib and also comes with a treatment. So after you're done washing it, you throw another cap full in. You run a full cycle and then let it dry. Um, biggest thing when you're when you're washing it, I would say, always hang dry your bibs and your jackets. I, you know, it says that you can uh, do it on low heat or tumble, but I always let them hang dry just because every seam is taped, and if your dryer gets too hot, it delaminates that taping. So I'd always recommend Nick Wax for the wash and coating and then just hang dry. Okay. There Stuff it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of re... It vitalizes the waterproofness. Of exactly. It. Yeah, right. it kind of holds all the fibers in place and, and all the DWR coating. Yeah. Do we have to shake these guys one time yet? I know. <laughs> there's, been some, there's been some serious questions. Yeah. Not right. a single one yet. Well, maybe back in the phones. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they can jump. <laughs> hey, maybe. If you want to get your chance back through, it's 213-432-1090. Let's talk to Chuck calling us from Dana Point this morning. Hi, Chuck. Welcome to the show. Good morning, you guys. What a great show. Um, you know, the passion you guys put into this stuff. Um, when you go pick something out, like if you go upstairs at Longfin, you probably got everything you sell there, just like going to a Bart Hall show coming up in January or whatever. Um, try them on, because uh, it's not going to wear out. You're going to have it for a long time. Yeah. I still have my original yeah. shorts from the, uh, uh, the little things you have over there, the swap meets. And what did you put inside that flyer liner? You know what would be a big seller? Seal skin. Every fisherman would buy one. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to volunteer to help you guys with the collection, you know. Appreciate um, the phone the lures, call, you know, when you buy these lures, it's so good that you don't have to change the eyelets and stuff because I've put a new eyelet, I mean, uh, the ring on it, and then it won't have the same action. So I'd pay an extra 5 10 bucks if I didn't have to do the line. I mean, change all that stuff out. All the hooks and, the, the and, the and stuff. Yeah. That's that's the thing is the jigs are all equipped with the right hooks and the right rings, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, and they and they swim with them. They, they, they swim, yeah. swim with everything. You don't have yeah. to worry about putting off the wrong ring yeah. or the wrong size mm-hmm. hook or anything like that. That's it's a done deal. And yeah. they don't and they
then they don't cost an extra five bucks. Yes. Like they're the same price same as all price. the other competitively with the priced right hardware. Lures, but they mm-hmm. already come with the yeah, right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Hey, Chuck, thanks a lot for the call. call. Happy New Year to you. Have, uh, uh, from Pete in San Juan Capistrano. He says, great show, guys. I am an AFCO junkie. Is <laughs> AFCO considered making an adjustable rod butt? I currently have detachable AFCO bent butt, but I am in the market for an adjustable butt for swordfish as well as bluefin tuna. That's a great That's question. A really good question. Uh, I would say... So you're thinking, they're t- he's talking like a Winthrop butt or something yeah, like that. Yeah. I would say uh, we're constantly evolving our tackle lineup, um, and I'll leave it at that. Oh, <laughs> hey. uh, okay. I like it. Yeah. we like. We, we, can we read through the lines on that? I know I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. All right. Well, how about this one from uh, Jose from Fallbrooks? Is, does AFCO plan on coming out with any other tackle bags in a roller style system in the future? Oh, another good question. You know, I, I'd have to ask Robbie on that one. Robbie, you know, handles all the tackle development. Um, I wouldn't say that we're not looking at it. I think, you know, from my personal experience, the, you know, using the ones that are on the market. The challenge there is a lot of times like the axles and, um, you know, actually supporting the bag or, you know, the challenge, you know, a lot of times the ones that I've used in the past have broke. Um, so if we are doing it uh, or do have plans to do it, we're going to do it the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd, I'd stay tuned. Perfect. Okay. There you go. Let's jump back on the phones, Rick. Eric from Valley Center is up next on Let's Talk. Hook up. Hi, Eric. I guess we lost Eric, but I have a, a, a text here. It's just a comment, really, from Carrie in San Diego. She says, AFCO also has a number of... You have a lot of AFCO junkies out there. They know you're probably, <laughs> like fine, probably better than you. <laughs> AFCO also has a number of products that support CC, that sport the CCA logo and donate $5 back to CCA. Thanks for bringing that up, Carrie, because, yeah, there's a lot of that going on, right? Yeah, no, that, I appreciate that. You know, going back to like our conservation efforts and our involvement, you know, Bill sits on the board for CCA California, um, and, and Robbie as well. Robbie uh, runs the LA chapter now. Right. Um, and on a, a more expansive level, not even just CCA California, but CCA National, um, across the country we're involved in a lot of CCA chapters, and we're always trying to find ways uh, to partner with those individuals and, and their groups um, to support their efforts. If that's not you know a donation per product or um, you know, a variety of the other things for the, their benefits that they hold. So yeah. um, no, nobody does more for CCA than AFCO. I can tell you that for sure, being yeah. a board member too. Yeah. Because uh, Bill and 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 Robbie and everybody involved at, is involved with CCA, and that's our future for yep. sure. Hey, one more quick text here from Jim and Morrow Bay. Good morning, gentlemen. Great show. I've had several tackle bags over the years, but have had to replace the, them due to zipper failing. Don't I don't overstuff them. Just seems like that. That's the weak point on them. If I purchase an AFCO tackle bag, is there a warranty on such an issue? Yeah, so all of our products covered by a two-year warranty, um, you know, if, if it's a failure of the product and not a, of use. Um, so um, I, I would agree. I think zippers are always the fail point yeah. on some of those. Um, but we strive to, to use a better quality, like YKK is, you know, the brand that we prefer, um, heavier-duty zipper um, on all of our bags. But we, we do take care of all our products. And I think that's one, you know, and another thing, talking about our customer service is we stand by our product. Yes. Uh, all, all of us have had zippers with every saltwater bag. I mean, there's not a person that listens to Let's Talk of the fish's salt water that hasn't. So keep that in mind and just and, – and trust me, I'm guilty of it. I'm saying this, and I know all mine are sitting there salty and crusty too. Dude, hit them with some kind of a penetrating lube. Hit them with some kind of a, a protective – like if you walked out to the garage right now and shot them with you know, whatever lubricant of your choice was and you did that a couple times a year, you're never going to have a zipper. You really going to do that, right? No, I'm not. I'm just saying like, – I'm saying my, mine are going to be busted, but I'm also not going to complain because I know about me enough yeah. to be like, yeah, that but, thing's Sat on my on the deck of my skiff and got yeah. wet all year long, and I'm just going to be stoked that I got the years out of yeah. it that I did. But but the, the bottom line is two year warranty on all the after yep. yeah yeah that's great all good. Hey, when we come back, we're going to find out who's got us some new gear, including that Seafarer bib and the brand new Afco reel bag. More let's talk hookup coming your way on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Let's talk candidly about long-range fishing. This is Captain Frank Capresti of the Royal Polaris and the Shogun. Nowhere on earth will you find a fleet of long-range boats like we have in San Diego. We are fortunate to have several top-notch operations to take you to the most productive fishing grounds in the world. We all offer good food, comfortable staterooms, huge bait capacity, and top-of-the-line fish-finding electronics. So why would you choose the Royal Polaris or the Shogun for your next long-range trip? What sets us apart from the rest? It's pretty simple. The boats, the crew, and the service. 
From the moment you arrive at Fisherman's Landing, the service begins. We help you load your gear and do everything possible to get beginners or seasoned veterans ready to catch fish. When it's time to fish, the Royal Polaris and the Shell Gun have the edge there, too. Delivering the two best fishing platforms in the fleet. But don't take my word for it. Come fishing with us. If you want the best, it's Royal Polaris and the Shell Gun. For more information, call 619-226-8030 or on the web at royalpolarissportfishing.com or showgunsportfishing.com. Long range fishing, nothing beats Shimano. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. Come check out the Shimano Talica, the pinnacle of lever drag two-speed reels. The Talica features Shimano's Hagani body when throwing jigs. The Shimano Trinidad is your top choice. With the extreme cranking power and Shimano Super Free Spool provides extreme castability. You'll be able to put your jig in the Wahoo Zone. For all your Shimano needs, visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. In San Diego, the future belongs to everyone. So Ford engineered the truck of the future for everyone. The Ford F-150, available with a pro-power onboard generator. What a great addition for anglers. There's also a variety of cab configurations for whatever you need to haul. The truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's created for us who love the ocean and the outdoor life. Ford F-150, test drive one at your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. All right, Maddie's going to do us the offer, flipping the prize coins. If we have a caller or a texter, and today we have a caller. Congratulations, Rod in Camarillo. You got yourself a brand new Seafarer bib and an AFCO reel bag. I don't know if that Seafarer bib is going to be in red or not, but you know, you got you got, you got new you got new gear coming, Rod. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. and thank you all out there for uh, all your support and all the texts and all the calls. And, oh my God, fun. you guys did a you guys killed it today. The Thank double mats, Matt V, <laughs> Matt Q. Thanks. So if we want more information, more investigation on AFCO, how do we do it, Matt? Uh, just go to AFCO.com and uh, find everything on there. Yeah, and uh, all the information and stuff, go to your local tackle shop, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the biggest thing is, you know, AFCO.com, we have our dealer locators. Uh, you know, we say if you're in, in the market for something, go to your local dealer first, see if they have it, try it on, put your hands on it. Um, in addition to that, you know, we have a ton of uh, tons of blogs, not only on fish care, but product care, um, even on how to launch your boat if you're just getting into yeah. fishing and need some advice. Um, so, and those guys know and they put something up, it's the real deal stuff. That's it's it. not just yeah. It is a lot. Oh, it's a lot yeah. of fun. No, and, and it's got to be fun to work there with all these guys that are super fishy guys, right? Yeah, it's a lot. You know, we sit in a in a little like pit area, and you know, we're always talking of you know, oh, did you go fishing? What's going on? And I think you know, unique thing about Africa is just the people. Yeah. You know, Bill says it all the it's time, and place. it's so true. Is you know, from product to marketing, everyone's one team. So yeah, it's fun. That's it. for sure. Well, thanks, great guys, job, for being guys. Here and for keep up the great work. Us. Yeah, we like your stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Keep it coming. Yeah, listeners too. So thank you very much to Christian for man and the busy phones this morning and all that he does. Appreciate his hard work for 2023, and he'll be back with us in 2024. And, of course, uh, Adam for all he does, too, on the Let's Talk Hookup app. And most of all, you out there, your texts, your calls, and just listening to Let's Talk Hookup. Appreciate your support. We'll be back for the final show of 2023 tomorrow morning, 7 to 9 a.m., with Captain Dave Ibrahim from the Tomahawk. He's going to be here talking fishing he's good there's some fishing to talk no about too. so we'll see you tomorrow morning for our final show right here on the mightier 1090 espn radio on let's talk about final show of 2023 thank you okay thank you <laughs>